Welcome to another episode of Comsbrief Telecom Basics. In this video series, we'll be talking about the most basic telecom terms in the simplest possible way. I'll try to keep things simple, but if something is unclear, do let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to explain it right there. So let's dive right in and today's topic is this one. Today's topic is what is a cell? A cell is a geographical area created by your mobile operator so that your mobile phone or cell phone can connect to the mobile network. It means that in order to get any network coverage from your mobile operator, you need to be in this area. Of course, it doesn't mean you start wandering around looking for these cells everywhere if you don't have coverage. It just means that your mobile operator needs to make sure there are enough cells to provide you coverage wherever you go. There are many, many cells in a mobile network. But if your mobile operator is not able to give you the cells you deserve for the money you pay them, you need to find a new mobile operator. When your phone connects to a mobile network within a cell, it can communicate in both directions so it can transmit and receive. So there are two things you need to know about the overall network connectivity, and these things are coverage and capacity. Coverage is about the quality of the signal, and capacity is about the ability of the network to handle the traffic load, which is people trying to access the network. So capacity is the bandwidth in megahertz or gigahertz, and coverage is the strength of the signal in dB. So these are dB levels. Coverage is so you get the signals or signal bars on your phone, and capacity is so you can actually use that signal to do something meaningful. Let's take an example to understand the difference between coverage and capacity. You know when you go to a cheap hotel and they tell you, oh, we have free Wi-Fi everywhere in this hotel building, and you're thinking, oh, that's cool. But then you connect your laptop to the hotel Wi-Fi and you can't actually do anything. Why? Because too many people are trying to use it at the same time as you. That means that the hotel Wi-Fi network has the signals everywhere in the building, which is great, of course, but unfortunately it is out of capacity because there's too much load on this Wi-Fi network. To make sure that you're always connected, your mobile operator has to deploy many, many cells in a mobile network. These cells are interconnected as well, so that when you move from one place to another, you stay connected thanks to something called handover or handoff. With an interconnected setup, a mobile network can create a large layer of cells in geographical areas like towns, cities, and countries. In any mobile network documentation, a cell is shown as a hexagon, just like you see on the screen. But in real life, cells have random shapes because a mobile signal does not travel as beautifully as a perfectly designed hexagon. It travels randomly like a crazy person, bumping into buildings, trees, poles, mountains, etc. If you want to access a cell for a particular mobile operator, you need a SIM card from that mobile operator. For example, if I want to connect to the T-Mobile network, I need a SIM card from T-Mobile. That way I'll be able to access the cells from T-Mobile wherever I go. Just so you know, SIM cards have been very common in the GSM-based mobile networks like GSM, UMTS, etc. But not so common in the earlier CDMA networks like CDMA1, or CDMA 2000. But all 4G and 5G phones always have a SIM card which can be physical or embedded. The embedded SIM is called eSIM, where the SIM is built into the phone and you, as a user, program it using a QR code. Your mobile phone is likely to be in many different cells at any given time. But not all cells are relevant for you because cells are specific to a mobile operator. For example, if you have a SIM card from T-Mobile, your phone can only access cells from T-Mobile. So, if you are within the coverage area of any other mobile operator, say Verizon or AT&T, you won't be able to access their cells without their respective SIM cards. The other thing you have to remember is that the same mobile operator will have different cells for different generations of mobile networks. 
So if your mobile operator offers 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G, they will have different cells within the same location so that if you run into poor network coverage or if the 4G or 5G network is busy, there is still some sort of connectivity available so that you can be connected. Just to give you an example, when I go to a particular hospital in Reading, UK, I can easily get 5G outdoors, but when I go indoors in the building, the network coverage gets poor. But my mobile operator can still keep me connected by putting me on 3G. Of course, 3G is very slow compared to 4G and 5G, but at least I'm connected thanks to the many cells my mobile operator has in the same area. It is also highly likely that you may be served by multiple cells for the same network generation. For example, multiple 4G cells. Finally, let's talk about how your mobile operator creates cells. A cell is created by the radiations from the radio units within a base station or cell tower. These radio units are called transceivers. A transceiver is a device that can transmit and receive, hence the word transceive. The radiations from the transceivers are electromagnetic waves, also known as radio waves. That is why a cell tower is part of the radio network within a mobile network. Now, to be clear, by radio network, we don't mean a radio station like FM100 or something. We just mean network equipment that can transmit and receive radio signals. The size and shape of a cell are determined by how far the radiations from a transceiver can travel. A cell is therefore just a coverage area, like a Wi-Fi hotspot, but a lot bigger and stronger. Usually at the bottom of a cell tower or base station, there's a cabinet that looks like a large cupboard. This cabinet is where the radio units or transceivers can be found. These transceivers are assigned specific radio frequencies to transmit signals to the mobile phone and receive signals back from the mobile phone. Thanks for watching the video guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you'd like to download some free telecom stuff, there's a link in the description below.